Hey, hello, welcome to the series that I'm going to try to do. Uh, I'm wanting to work on building a protogen head, including the electronics. And to do that, I kind of need a workbench area. So I just don't really have any space elsewhere that has good light, enough sp uh, area to work with near a computer. So uh, I had a spare desk here, so I'm gonna set that up for it. Uh, I've already got power hooked up to it because I kind of needed that to be able to adjust the height of it. But uh, now I'm gonna go ahead and set up all of the other stuff that I'm gonna put on the bench. I'm gonna start with this little work light. Um, I don't have the electronics parts yet and I won't have the head frame for probably at least a couple of months. Uh, the electronics parts are supposed to get here later this week, but I figured I might as well get started on setting up the desk while I'm um, waiting for the parts to get here. So I had a spare uh, sit-stand desk here from uh, reasons. Uh, so I went ahead and set it up. I got a little power switch over here, or a power strip over here, which has switches for every outlet, which is going to be handy to be able to just control stuff. And now I'm setting up a little LED lamp that can clip onto here and hopefully give me some decent light in, a, in specific areas. I don't know, I'm literally unboxing this stuff as I go along. So we will see. Apologies for the lighting setup right now. It's not great. Hopefully this light will help. And I have no idea where I want to put the cameras in the long run. Uh, that's probably going to depend on how everything gets all set up. Okay, so this light seems pretty decent. I'm not entirely sure where I'm going to want to clip it. Uh, it's got a nice strong clippy base and a nice long neck. So maybe to start with, just on the edge over Oh no, the support doesn't work on that edge, so I'll have to put it on the back like so, which you can't see at all on that camera. Let's just put it back there. Now run some power to it and see how much that light helps. Maybe it ends up over by the power strip. I'm not sure yet. All right, so we have some light set up here now. I can adjust it. You can see it's you know, doing a decent amount down here. That might work. Don't know, this does have a multiple brightness. This doesn't seem to have any sort of switch whatsoever. Oh wait, it's got on the top, ah, there we go. One, two, three. So that's as bright as it goes. So I might end up moving this. I wonder if maybe even down here and snake the neck around would help. It probably would, but I'm just gonna leave it right there for now. I can always adjust it later. And I've got it on a nice switch over on the power strip. So I can just turn it off that way and not use its built-in switch. When you turn the switch back on, it comes back on and it even remembers what brightness it was on. Very handy. Next order of business, let's go with this unmarked box. I think this is probably parts organizers, but I don't see anything on the box. Yes, this is the parts organizers. Oh, it even has labels. A lot of labels. All right, so these are going to be nice. Um, they're probably not going to stay on this workbench permanently. But I'm going to have, especially while building stuff, you know, all sorts of different headers that I have to deal with, um, resistors, capacitors, just electronics components that I need to keep organized. So these little storage boxes will uh, be very nice for that. Hinges are a little flimsy, but the nice thing about these ones is you can remove these dividers, at least the horizontal dividers. So you can put longer stuff in here, like microcontroller boards and you know, maybe screwdrivers and stuff like that. So these will be nice to do, use for parts organizing. Just put the labels in here for now and put them off to the side. I also have some storage container, like bigger boxes, you know, like yay big that these can go in, but they're not here yet. They'll get here later this week. And I can probably just shove those under the desk uh, for storing those. Next, let's go with the anti-static mat. 
might not need one because this is uh, vinyl flooring, but I figured it doesn't hurt to have. And it's also got some parts organizing on it. So things that I'm actually using right away aren't gonna roll around. There we go. Anti-static silicon soldering. It's a little bit rolled, but hopefully uh, putting stuff on it and leaving it sit out here for a few days will help that. It's also got some uh, rulers on it, which is also very handy. Anti-static bag with stuff to hook up to it to uh, make it actually be grounded. Looks like we got some soldering or screw bit holders up here. Anti-static mat instructions. Uh, so it's got this little plastic adapter that you plug into an outlet to get access to the grounding lug. I might not need this. Uh, we will see once I get to the next thing that we're gonna open. But uh, a nice grounding strap for your wrist, I probably won't end up using that. But then you have this uh, little cable here with uh, alligator clips on either end uh, and you're supposed to just clamp anywhere on here and they say clamp onto your little grounding adapter but we'll see if I need that. I'm just going to put this stuff off to the side for right now. Oh, English, it has, it doesn't have hot tips. It has warm tips. That's not going to focus at all, is it? No, it's not. Warm tips instead of hot tips. Thanks, English. All right, the last big item is important for any good electronics workbench. And that is a nice DC power supply. Future me is going to deal with that trash pile in probably about half an hour. But I don't need to worry about it for now. Okay, so what we have here, oh, it's at the 230 volts, so let's fix that, is a decent looking, we'll see how decent it actually is, uh, programmable DC power supply. So you can set the voltage in the current limiter and it will tell you how many amps, it's, uh, how much current is actually being used. It also do the math for watts. Anyway, it looks pretty decent. It's got a lot of ventilation. It's got a fan in it. Uh, what I need, what I really want to know is, does that ground load always go through the ground? Let me grab my multimeter. So I've had a, some of, some electronic stuff for a while like this relatively cheapo multimeter, probably like a decade, little, maybe a little more than that. But I haven't done like any embedded electronic stuff in a very long time, probably close to a decade. So that's why I'm just getting stuff, starting over. I've got a bunch of like actual tools and stuff arriving with all the microprocessor and LED stuff uh, later this week. But I still have a multimeter. So I'm gonna use that one because it works. Let's put it on continuity mode. Uh, where's continuity mode? Is that? Oh, there it goes. And let's see if we get continuity from the ground pin of this to the ground pin on the front. We do. So, that's why I was saying I probably don't need this little plastic adapter for the anti-static mat because this little ground lug here in the middle on the power supply is constantly connect, is like permanently connected to the grounding pin on the input of the power supply. So what I will probably end up doing is just using the grounding lug of this as my uh, earth ground for my anti-static mat. And to go along with this, instead of using the, having to use the leads it comes with, which have spade connectors on them, which are kind of okay, whatever. I got a set of leads that have banana clips on them. So what I could do instead is take 
green lead out of here, plug it into that. And then snake it around here and clip it onto the anti-static mat like so. And now I have a ground connection that I don't have to worry about. I don't have to worry about this little plastic adapter just being shoved in here. I'm going to put that in there for right now though. So I can validate continuity again. So let's go ahead and plug in the bench power supply and maybe mess around with it for a little bit. Not that I have much that I can power with it. Hold that thought. So I just remembered that I do have one thing that I could maybe try powering with this, but I don't know if I can connect to the power rail very efficiently or effectively. Okay, yeah. Okay, let's try it. So one of the things that I messed with ages ago uh, when I was doing microprocessor stuff before was I got this little clock kit from SparkFun. Uh, focus is just a pain tonight, apparently. Anyway, sorry, sorry for the focus. It's just not wanting to. There we go. Little clock kit, uh, LED, some buttons on it. Um, I don't even remember what the software state is on this before, but this is like the first thing I learned how to solder. It's very simple. It's got an AVR processor on it. Um, has a has a barrel jack for power input. But if I can uh, interpret this correctly, that's saying it's a tip positive power supply. So if I validate which connector on here is the tip, which I think it would be the one on the back. So if I just use that and then touch the tip there, Ugh, come on. Yeah, so that's the tip, right? Okay, so yeah, the back is the tip, and then one of the other ones is the ground. So that's fine. I can test the power supply on this little dude, this little guy, and it says four to six volts. It doesn't even have a voltage regu regulator on it that I can tell, so that just must be what the AVR takes. So we'll give that a little bit of a try. Uh, but first, I need to provide power to the power supply. Oh, and in case you were wondering what this uh, plug is on the power uh, strip, that is the desk's motor, because it is a motorized sit stand. So we have the power supply plugged in. Uh, I want to, before I turn it on, do one more check that this is grounded. Cool. So that is a permanent ground. That is a permanent ground. I don't need this little silly little piece of plastic adapter. So I can just do this and my work area will be grounded. I don't have to worry about it. So next, I need two more leads for the power supply. And these will be our plus and minus, or our, our five volts in our ground. So you turn this on. Helps to turn the power strip on. Cool. Let's see if I can get a better angle on the power supply. So. This is, a nut. this is the bench power supply. It's currently set to 31 volts for some reason. Uh, and 
we don't need five amps of current. Let's just set it to whoop. Well, let's just set it to 300 milliamps. That should be plenty. And now, if I hit output, it should enable. Well, before I hit output, let's put the multimeter in 20 volt DC mode. Uh, we're in 20 volt DC mode here. You see that we're reading zero. I've got the leads from the multimeter clipped onto the leads from the power supply, keeping them separated so they can't short. And now, let us enable the output on the power supply and hopefully things don't go pop. All right, 4.97 volts and no current. So yeah, I say that that power supply is working as it says it works. I don't, I guess that long drop up on the voltage is because there's no actual load on it. And, I, and if you look, it said there was zero amp load on the uh, power supply after it settled. So uh, the smoke test of the power supply didn't let any smoke out, so that's very good. So let us go over here to our little uh, clock it board here and we determine that it is marked uh, center positive so we'll grab our ooh, camera camera there we go so we're going to grab our positive lead and this bit right here is what we determined is the center so we have plus five volts connected, and I'm going to connect ground. I'm going to check to see which pin on the ISP header is ground, because I'd rather plug that in over there instead. Okay, so the bottom right pin on this ISP header right here is ground. So I'm going to see if I can clip onto that without touching anything else. I, don't have good clip leads. I only have these alligator clips. Okay, so that is clipped. Okay, so neither, so both of these clips are on and they're not touching anything else. So hopefully, when I hit output on the power supply, we get something on the screen and we don't let the magic smoke out. Hey, look at that. We have a clock that's using 14 milliamps. I don't remember how you set it. I haven't used this in ages. That might be the alarm time. Do I have to hold up? Yeah, I don't remember how the software on this works. A set, alarm set, okay. Oh, I bet I hold this and then I get I don't know, that's still setting the alarm. But if I hold up. No, down? I don't know. Yeah, I don't remember uh, how the software on this works. And I don't care to try to figure out how uh, or look it up right now, but clearly it's working. We're getting a, a, a clock power from our little DC power supply here. So I'm going to say that's working. So we can disconnect our little test device and turn off our power supply at the power strip. So I think that about does it for what I can do today. Yeah, I've got my power supply set up. I've got my power strip set up. I have a lamp set up. I might move this. Um, I'll have to see how the video came out to see how well it actually uh, worked. The lamp, I will have to try to figure out how, where I'm gonna put the camera or cameras. I don't know if I'm actually gonna use any footage from the second camera. Um, can move this a little bit closer against the wall once I neaten up the wiring, but 
hey, it's a start. And hopefully later this week, once the rest of the stuff arrives, I will be able to finish setting up my work area. I have a soldering station probably about here. Um, boxes underneath to store supplies and including these component bins. And uh, I'll probably be able to put my laptop off to a side when I need to program. And yeah, we'll, we'll see. I've got, I've got my file server under the desk here in case I want to use that as the computer instead, but I need to put a monitor up here. I don't know, I'll figure it out. I might move some of these things around, but it's a start and I'm looking forward to spending a good amount of time this weekend on actually writing code and assembling electronics. I hope that this was somewhat interesting. I know what to do, just setting stuff up and not really doing anything, but hopefully I will come back with another video of unboxing the electronics stuff once it gets here. Uh, I will probably not have time to do that until Friday evening and maybe I can get another video up this weekend of doing that. I don't know. We'll find out. I just hope that this has been entertaining and if y'all want to see me continue going through this, um, I, I promise things will get more interesting once I actually have more electronics in front of me to tinker with. But um, stick around and we'll we'll see where we can go. I have big plans for how I want to assemble this protogen head. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, thanks for watching.